Okay, hello. As you heard, my name is Iri Olsha. I work for Red Hat and I work as a kernel engineer and my area is perf. And Ftrace, uh, this presentation is going to be about the uh, perf profiling, so basically using the perf tool and the Linux kernel perf subsystem for some, for some profiling. So I will go through just through some simple notes about installation. Then I will cover some theory grounds like architecture and uh, what is event. Then it will get more practical. I will show you how to measure events. We have two basic modes, uh, counting and sampling. Then I will introduce uh, two other tools from Perf, uh, and it's Perf Top, Perf Diff, and if there is a time, I will show you how you can contribute to Perf and where you can find some documentation. Okay, let's start. With the basics, uh, perf is coming uh, as a simple package uh, on my, uh, my system, which is Fedora. It is as easy as running yum install perf. So you will get the uh, perf binary after installing this. Uh, when installing packages, it's worth to mention debug info packages. Perf is very tightly bounded to debug info RPMs uh, because most of the perf output uh, is actually uh, from within the binaries, so like function addresses. So whenever there's a chance, we can translate these addresses to show you some piece of the source code or some function name, we do that. So if you do profile some uh, application, just make sure the debug info is installed as well. Okay, just very quickly to show you what you will get after installing perf. So, on my system, that's the simple RPM, as I said, you will get the perf binary. If you run it, you will get list of the available commands uh, for perf. Perf basically supports a sort of Git-like interface, which means that you have one super binary and this works as a proxy to all of the available commands in perf. So, just very quickly, if you want to run any command, let's say it's that command, you just type perf stat, name of the program, and uh, basically that's, uh, that's how most of the uh, commands uh, works. It will run the application and print you uh, some information about the application. I will get to this in more details. This is just for introducing how it works in a nutshell. Each command has a help, which will direct you to the man page, where you can eat, find uh, everything you would like to know. It should be up to date, hopefully. So, architecture. To introduce some theory behind perf. Architecture is basically uh, two sides, uh, kernel side and user side. Kernel uh, expose this performance event interface, uh, which is available uh, by the uh, syscall, which is called sysperf event open. And what it does, it actually provides you some abstraction over the event. So you can use just this one uh, syscall and open any kind, any kind of events. I will get to events uh, afterwards. So basically, it looks like this. We have always the tracer. We have traces. Tracer is the guy who wants to trace some other guy. Tracy is what you can actually trace. So what tracer does, it uses the syscall to open event over some target. Target could be any CPU in the system, PID, TID, C group, probably everything you would be interested in. After you open the event, uh, the perf subsystem will get you standard file descriptor. And you can do basically everything uh, you are used to do with a standard file descriptor. So you can get 
uh, you can set up the file descriptor to get the uh, signal, uh, IO signal uh, delivered anytime there's a data on the descriptor. You can <coughs> use standard read and Paul syscalls to get the data out of the descriptor. And you can also map memory between the kernel and user space. Kernel will put the event data to this memory and user space can read it very fast. And at the end, you unmap close descriptor and you are done. So that's getting us to the user space part. Uh, the tracer user space is actually an application that's using this uh, perf event uh, interface. Uh, perf tool is actually one of uh, many tools that are available to interface this uh, uh, perf subsystem. Uh, you can Google them, uh, they are on the internet. So as for the perf tool, uh, the source of the perf tool is in the, in the Linux kernel tree and currently it's under very heavily development. We have many changes each uh, release. We have also many contributors like Red Hat, IBM, Google. So uh, that's about it. I already showed you, showed you perf. Events. Uh, event is like a very crucial term for uh, perf profiling. Basically, everything that moves in the system and can be measured, produce some number, and can be measured uh, by uh, perf uh, is called event. Uh, we have basically two types of events uh, in perf, and that's hardware event and software event. We have also trace points, which are software event, but they are kind of, kind of special. You can get a list of all available events by running perf list command. I will show you. So running perf list will give you a list and you can notice the tags on the right side. It will get you the idea what's the uh, event. So you see we have some hardware events and software events, some cache events and oh, just a second. and we have trace points. Okay, so that's basically uh, about events. I will start with hardware events. Hardware events are events uh, that are provided by CPU, by the microarchitecture of the CPU. Uh, any hardware event I will talk about today is related to x86 hardware and the reason is it's the only architecture I know something about. So basically, CPU provides you, uh, uh, provides some counters uh, to application and those counters can be divided into um, architectural and non-architectural events. There are many, uh, many counters for the CPU and each CPU model has uh, its own counters. They are similar, but they are not the same because the architecture is always different. But there are six counters which are called architectural events and those counters are uh, said to be same over all CPU architectures. So you can use those counters for in, uh, on any CPU that you cross. And the rest, non-architectural events, that are just uh, those events that are different from on each architecture. So architectural events, as you can see, this is, those are just the basic metrics in the system start with the cycles, which gives you the number of CPU clock, I mean CPU, CPU cycles clock, uh, instructions that will give you the number of executed instructions. Then we have two cache uh, related events. Uh, basically all modern CPUs has, uh, have caches and I mean, whenever you go uh, to the data, you either go to the cache, and if you are lucky, the data is there. 
if you are not lucky, you need to go to the memory and it will you cost more cycles. So it's good to know if I actually found the data in the cache or not and that's uh, where those two counters can, <coughs> can help you. So cache references, anytime you reference the cache, cache misses anytime you need to go to the memory. As for branches, uh, each program is uh, made of branches. Anytime the program makes a jump, it's a new branch. And CPU is actually trying uh, to predict those branches. And whenever the CPU is wrong about the prediction, branch misses counter is incremented and you can get the number for your computer and uh, for your application and do something about it. So those are the architectural uh, counters that are same across all architectures. And following list is the non-architectural events and this is just for one architecture, micro-architecture, micro which is called uh, Sandy Bridge. So as you can see, there's really a lot of them. It's over 250 uh, on this list. So if you want to use any of those uh, events, you actually need to uh, check the software developer manual for each CPU and you will get the explanation uh, for each event. As I said, different from each micro architecture. So new manual for each CPU. I have this slide just show you some simple way how we can understand the hardware events. Basically, what's the point is it's that we want to know in application where we actually spend the cycles. So if you consider following program, following uh, it's just a very simple while loop. When you translate, compile uh, this code, you will end up uh, with eight instructions. And if you measure those inst uh, eight instructions, uh, you get some number of cycles. Uh, now the point is uh, to find out where those cycles are spent. So the easiest two are to say, okay, did I go to memory or did I go to cache? If I go to memory, I will spend extra cycles on it. I will get more cycles spent. Did I predict it, the branch properly? No, extra cycles. Yes, I am happy. Everything goes. So this is kind of uh, the point uh, when using hardware events. Uh, the point is to say where the application is spending its cycles. That's it for hardware, software. Software uh, are purely implemented uh, by kernel. Software events are purely implemented by kernel. They cover uh, very key kernel operations. I will show you uh, in next slide. And uh, sort of special events, uh, software events are train points. I will describe this as well. So software events, as I said, key kernel operations. There could be probably more, but uh, so far only four of them. So page fault gives you the number of the page fault that happened during your measurement. Uh, task clock gives you the time the task was actually scheduled on the CPU. Context switch, uh, whenever there, there was a context switch, you can get the number as well and same for a uh, task migration, you can get those number as well. Trace points. Trace points are software events, uh, but they are special in a way that they actually started in Ftrace project. And what they are, they are actually hooks uh, in the kernel code. So you can imagine you have a kernel function or any other function, and there's explicitly uh, on some line calling uh, this uh, trace point hook, which will actually trigger the event or trigger some ftrace event. So you can, uh, you can actually find them in the kernel source tree. And actually, it's very helpful when you work with trace points. Uh, some, some trace points are easy to understand, uh, like for signal delivery. But some trace points are really special. And you need to know uh, where in the source code uh, the trace point was triggered. Okay, let me show you some trace points. So perf list, among other stuff, will give you the trace points as well. You can see drivers 
exports uh, trace points as well. And for example, as I was talking about the signal, those two trace points are meant to be incremented uh, when there is a signal delivery or if there's a signal uh, generation. And well, as I said, those two are easy to understand. The others could be, could be harder and you actually need to check the source tree. Okay, so you know what's event, that we have hardware event, software event, and now if you move to the uh, perf tool, you need to know how actually to specify the event. Perf tool makes it easy in a way that there's every time the command is working uh, with event, uh, there's a dash E option, and that's the, that's the option for all commands that lets you specify the event. Uh, basically, anything that's displayed in the perf list command uh, can be used uh, as a command name. So if you, if you type dash E cycles, it will measure you cycles. You can specify multiple events like uh, with, with the comma, like with the instructions, cycles, comma, instructions. For the trace points, you need to specify the whole name of the trace point, and you can use also uh, asterisk sign to say I want all the trace points. For non-architectural events, it's kind of complicated because non-architectural non hardware events are complicated. So we have this interface uh, where you specify actually terms and populate them with values. And those values you will get from the manual of the CPU could be used. Another way to narrow down uh, the event is using the modifiers. Uh, I made example of user space and kernel, kernel space modifiers. What it means is if you measure cycles, just by default without any modifier, you will get the cycle spans both in user space and kernel space, and you can narrow this down. You can say, okay, I want just user space cycles, or I want just kernel space cycles. By default, if you don't specify, it's everything. And there's much more. Uh, this part of the perf tool is actually quite um, alive, and it's under heavy development right now and we are getting to new events, so it will evolve, and hopefully the documentation will evolve as well. So that was theory. You know what's event, how you can specify it now, how you can actually measure events. We have two basic modes, counting and sampling. So counting, what counting does, it basically provides you a summary uh, of the event uh, for the run. So let's say you have the application, you run it, you attach uh, the counters to the application, and at the end you will get the total number uh, for the event that was counted during the application run. Uh, the guy, the command that will measure this for you is perfstat. Uh, it has the dash E option, of course, and you can also specify the target. You can, as you saw in the previous slide, you can measure the counter like system-wide, you can attach the counter to any CPU, any process, even a C group. So, example. As I said, what we saw first was just simple running perfstat ls. What it actually means is that uh, perfstat uh, will create the default counters, which is by default this list. If you don't specify any counters, it will, it will get like this. You will get those counters. So perfstat will create those counters. It will attach it uh, to the LS binary. Run the LS binary, you will see the output of the LS. And when the LS is finished, the report is printed. And the report is basically self-explanatory. You will get the number, you will get the event name, and you will get some uh, some comment which is related uh, to the event and could be useful sometimes. So let's say you want to measure just cycles. You type it just like this. Let's say you want to measure user space cycles. 
you use the dash u. Let's say just last example, you want the instructions as well. As easy as this. I have uh, prepared uh, another example for the trace point. So as I said, we have following two trace points for signal delivery and uh, signal generation. If we are going to monitor those trace points, we can run perf stat dash e saying, okay, I'd like to get those signals monitored and the application I'm going to monitor is sleep, 100 second sleep. In my other window, I will run perf stat with just the same setup saying I want to monitor signals, trace points, and I will actually run the kill application that should reach the sleep command. So what happened here is the time when I actually execute the write per stat, the kill command gets executed and you can see the result of the trace point is that one signal was generated, which is what we expected. And at the other terminal, the sleep was sleeping until the signal from the uh, kill command came and kill it and stat display that we actually have one signal delivered. So that's how the trace points work in most of the way in perf. So that was counting. So that's like the summary uh, for the run. Uh, the other mode, the other mode, no. Yeah, the other mode is sampling and it's kind of the standard profiling you would see for example in O profile. So what it does, it uh, collects uh, event samples at some given rate, the rate can be changed. And uh, how it works is that you run perf record on some application or on some target. Record will attach uh, the event uh, to the target and kernel will start uh, sending back uh, to the user space the event samples. After that, it will create the data file. And when you have the data file, you run the perf report and you will Perf report is actually a command that will show you uh, the results of the sampling. Again, for dash e, uh, for record command, you can specify dash e to specify the target uh, events, and you can you can basically choose any targets as you would be allowed for stat command as well. The perf report is actually the one that produces you, uh, I'm sorry, uh, that uh, displays uh, the, the data uh, from the sampling to the user. So that's the guy who's, this, this command is actually under very heavy development. Uh, so far we have like three GUI interfaces, simple terminal one and cars is based and GTK. There are some options that you can customize the report I will show you in a while. And here's the place that you will appreciate the debug info, either in the debug info RPM or any debug info you can provide because perf report, perf report is the command that actually shows you the functions, uh, the source code, the annotations, everything. So whenever there's debug info, you are more lucky to see some sensible result. So perf record example, you can run the record same way as the stat. What uh, this command does is that it takes by default the cycles event and uh, initiate a sampling mode uh, for the ls command. It will run the ls command. You can see the result of the ls command. And when the ls is done, it will actually store all the data that, it, that came from the kernel. It will store to the data file. The data file by default is called perf.data and perf.data is the default file that report will open if you run it like this, just perf report and uh, you will get the, uh, the data from the perf data. 
what you see here is um, basically Perf report reads all the samples uh, from the data file and it groups them. It, it groups them by default um, by symbol. So we were measuring cycles and we have the samples grouped by symbol. So in this, in this uh, output, you can see where the application is, uh, is spending most of its time. So for this, it's the CTOP new exec function. So let's take another example. Let's say I want more data. Yeah. yeah. I will record yes command, which will actually hook CPU and get some data to be generated. So if I run it like this, uh, the yes command is uh, executed uh, with the cycles event uh, being attached to it and the data are going to user space to the data file. If I interrupt this, I will actually see that we have the pair of data created. I can run the pair of report and see actually uh, where the program spent uh, most of its time. You can see it spent this time in some ellipsy function that is basically outputting the uh, epsilon or whatever it does. I have an, another example. Let's say you want to uh, monitor the counter system wide. That's why you specify, specify dash A. And you want to monitor it for sleep command for 10 seconds. Okay, you go. In another, another terminal, I will run yes command. And after 10 seconds, the record will stop, will create the data. And you can examine the data by running perf report. So those are data system wide. So you can see we have like not just the yes command, but xterm, swapper, whatever was uh, busy at the system at the moment. And I said uh, we have some, uh, some switches that makes that you can actually group not just by symbol, but you can group by application. So running this report like this, dash S P I D, I will sort the samples by PID. And what I will get, I will get the a list of the applications that were, I mean, according to how busy they were during the measurement. So the winner is X server because actually we printed on the X term and it was busy. Okay, perf report. Annotations. Uh, annotations are very, it's a very useful feature. Basically what it tells you, uh, whenever you take the sample, uh, you take the memory, uh, memory address, uh, code address of this uh, sample. And it's actually very useful to see uh, when, where the sample in the application was taken. Uh, so that's what this perf annotate command is for. Uh, but you don't need to run perf annotate. Uh, you can, uh, this annotate command is built in uh, inside, inside the GUI. So if I take the data from the previous run, and let's say I want to see VC with function WCW, whatever, that function, I will press enter and I will get menu with some other comments. First of them is annotate. If I annotate this, uh, what I will get, I will get basically, uh, this is the function, function store. Uh, I don't have a debug info for Lipsy, so this is what you get when you don't have the uh, debug info. You will get just the assembly output and for each line of this assembly output on this side, you can see the percentage of the samples that were taken on that line. So you can see that 28% was taken on in here. Yeah. If I show you some example, I have the debug info for kernel installed. So if I annotate this function, I will get the output of where the samples were taken. Uh, in this function and I will get it mixed with actual C code. 
uh, there's the C code and it's interleaved with the assembly instructions and for each assembly instructions you will get the percentage of the samples, so very useful. I have two other uh, tools that I can uh, show you. It's perftop uh, and perfdiv. Uh, perftop, uh, what it does, it's actually live sampling. Uh, that means, in a sense, it's doing like report, uh, uh, record and report and do it like uh, continuously. So, example, if I run perftop just like this, it will get you the output that is similar to standard top utility and you can see what applications are eating the cycles most. If I run in my second window the yes, I will actually uh, get this uh, extreme is taking more and some command names. Command name. Uh, already. You had it already. PID, dash S, PID. And I yes. run it. It's available both for top and report. So it actually gives you uh, sort of the top-like utility uh, output. Could be useful as well. Perfdiv. Uh, so the normal way how you profile the application is that you have the application, you run the record, you run the report, you will see the stats and you are going to do something about it. So let's say you change something in the application and again you run record, report, and now you want to compare those two uh, sample files. And that's uh, what the perf diff for. So if I run perf record on the S, oh. wait for a while and run it again and kill it again. What I will get is uh, actually I have now two data files. Each time the record is running, it creates the perf data file and it moves the old perf data file to file called perf.data.old and that's what perf this is working over. So if you run perf diff, you actually uh, get the comparison of two of those uh, data files. So the baseline, the old one, uh, you will get the whatever you would get for the report and you will get the difference uh, from the new file. So you can see if your changes to the binary that you are profiling were any good. Okay. So that's it for the perf tools explanation I have today. Uh, I have some two more slides for how you can actually uh, join the perf development and where you can find the documentation. So, as for any other tool, uh, open source tool, you can always report back or send a patch. Uh, we have special perf tool mailing list, Linux perf users, uh, which deals with user problems and the patches are going uh, on the Linux standard Linux kernel mailing list. As I said, the perf tool uh, source code is uh, in the Linux kernel tree. So any change that is going to the perf is actually uh, going uh, to the kernel. And as for the developer development, we have like uh, three basic trees. Uh, the main perf tree is the perf, uh, is the tree of the main developer for perf, Arnaldo de Mello. He's from uh, Brazil and he maintains the first tree and that has the latest uh, perf stuff. Uh, Arnaldo pushes uh, his changes to the Ingo Molnar to the tip tree and Ingo pushes to Linux tree. So that's how the each and every 90% uh, of the patches uh, flow in the, uh, in the perf. We have some time so I can uh, show you actually how the sources looks like. <laughs> yeah. So, if you clone the Linux kernel tree and go to the root of the Linux kernel tree, you will get here. 
perf tool is located under tools perf and it is as easy as running make I will clean the sources first so the build process actually checks for your setup and it will customize the uh, the build to uh, well to use anything you have on your computer so if some library is missing, it will try to uh, skip it and uh, build the perf without it. So, if we wait for a while, we'll end up with uh, perf uh, binary, hopefully. It will take just a few seconds. It's like small sources. It's not like kernel. Sometimes when I run uh, the annotate part, <coughs> it is often I see it's, it's accounting the, 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 the instruction which is actually using the time is the instruction just above. Yeah, that's well that's probably related to hardware events, right? It's more complicated. Hardware events are often not that precise. Yeah, uh, the event can uh, happen ahead uh, before it is actually uh, notified uh, on the up floor, so that's how, how you end up. And you can actually sort this out uh, using the uh, double colon p modifier. It's like being uh, precise. You can run the perf like perf record cycles cycles dash p. That's for the precise. Yeah. And you should get much precise output. But hard hardware events <coughs> are tricky in this way. You can. You need always consider some uh, some space above and under the instruction. Okay, where was I? Perf. So after you compile the perf, you will get the perf binary, and that's it basically. That's uh, all you need, and you can uh, whatever changes you go, you compile, you make the patch, you send. As easy as this. Documentation. We have man pages. As I showed you, each comment has the man page. Uh, there are many documents uh, on the internet. Uh, as for the hardware events, there are SDM documents, which is acronym for software developer manuals. And Intel and AMD actually uh, shares them uh, publicly. So for any hardware events, you will get the documentation in there. There are also some Optimization manuals uh, that can be found in the Google and they are also very helpful. And as for the perf tool itself, we have a wiki, we have a to do. So if you feel like joining, that's as easy as taking a job in the to do list and starting developing. So it's, that's it from me. If you have any questions, okay. Yeah, perf tool is uh, mainly for where your programs spend your cycles. As for the C group, I think you need to specify, I'm not sure, but I think you need to specify the name of the C group. So I guess it needs to be created before you can use it, if that was your initial question. So, so it's more like you can watch uh, when it's created and then start watching? Uh, I'm not sure about it. Okay. Maybe, maybe possible. But no. Definitely, you can uh, you can attach perf to any existing C group. I, I'm not sure if you can do that for any other C group. <coughs> More questions? Okay. Thank you. 
Oh. Yeah, I see. Uh, well, it's said to be uh, very lightweight. It shouldn't have uh, that much impact, but definitely the uh, perf, uh, perf parts in the kernel, they are there, they are not simple. So there is some, uh, some extent of, I mean, uh, taking the system resources, but it's definitely not that bad. I think I saw some system running perf constantly and they just, I mean, they didn't care. It wasn't that bad. It's, it's uh, based on hardware wins. I, I, I use it for testing 10 gigabit uh, hardware and use, it doesn't affect my results from that. So it's, it's sampling the, the hardware. Yeah. If you do software stuff, it's yeah, almost maybe. going to yeah. give you some more. Yeah, I don't know much about the O profile other than that it basically does the standard uh, profiling as the sampling. And I don't think there's any uh, relation. I think that's our two independent projects. Definitely uh, the kernel part is separated and the user part as well, I think, definitely. So I would say it's not related at all. that uh, you have uh, trace points within the kernel you can attach to, right? right. Um, and I want to ask, do you need to recompile the kernel in order to get the, the trace points there or there are in the, uh, or are they in the stock kernels? Yes, yeah. so yeah, trace points goes uh, with the kernel source. Yeah. So whatever you have in the kernel, it's there. And if you want some new, you definitely need to recompile. But uh, I mean, you can have trace points in the module and whatever goes with the module, if you load the module, you will you will end up with new trace points. But if you change the kernel, definitely you need to recompile. There's no other way. Um, when you already have the trace points, how do you hook some action on them? Action. So, well, the action for the perf is just to get the number incremented. Uh, there's a little bit more in the F-trace. You can actually get some more data from the trace points. Each trace point has, a, uh, has some arguments. They are going uh, to the user space as well but it's more F-trace related than the perf. Perf is just about the number, it's mostly. Hooking, Sorry? It's not about hooking some action. No, no point. action, just numbers. Yes. Yes. More questions? <coughs> okay, oh, no. Yeah, I think that's a tricky question <laughs> because yeah, th there are some problems like with changing the interface for the trace point. As far as I know, this is being discussed, but there was no conclusion so far. I think in RHEL, we maintain some sort of backwards uh, compatibility with regards to the trace points, uh, but in upstream, I'm not sure. I guess we can change whatever we want, okay. Source code. Yes. Maybe. When you change something in the kernel, you change right. the user space too. Okay. Thank you. That's it. <laughs>